it to the stove guy that guy sells the stove. No. No. Well, well, not the guy not with the junk yard. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, Paul, that's Paul. Yeah. He's my, he's my second cousin. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, right. Um, so this is John Grove Earl Township for 1936. I do some things in reverse of what's expected. I grow a thick beard in summer. In the icy feel of cold months, I shave. Back in the days when my cheeks were still newer to scattering beams of sunshine, I had enough jobs to to the point that it's almost hard to accurately tally them. For 11 months before I could drive, since my dad said I needed to own a car first, I repaired machines at Ozan Manufacturing Company Incorporated in Boyertown. Soon, I bought a black 1935 Plymouth Coupe for $125. But then I met Adam Stam, who did excavating, operating out of Mooresville. He hired me to drive his trucks, hauling dirt away for him. He died in a penitentiary, convicted of murder from a love triangle. He liked women entirely too much, I could tell, or control. Several 1961 newspaper articles note two charred skeletons in a car near Lake Ontolani. Ma- uh, Marie Peggy Timmons, 34, and John Heineman, 43, set a fire. They discovered a two-month-old Clara in the blaze, too, all the evidence pointing to my old boss. I opted instead for something with less gruesome of ties, worked at Bachman Pretzel Company near Laureldale wrapping rods in wax-aligned paper to ship abroad. Then I had a mushroom-picking job before driving a huckster truck of farm produce. I later ran a machine, cutting metal at A.W. Mercer Incorporated in Boyertown. But for two winters in my early 20s, I worked at what everybody called the Cheese Factory in Ole Township, the Windmill, Windmill Cheese Company. At night, Daylight gone, I unloaded government butter into the building from tractor trailers. The U.S. National Library of Medicine has a case of adulteration and misbranding of this cheese where milk fat was left out of a shipment sent to Brooklyn, documented back to October 17, 1951, labeled Swiss Chalet Gruyere type Swiss processed cheese and Jason's Cheeses That Pleases American Pasteurized. (laughs) I never saw much of the inside of that mill, never even watched them slice or package the butter. I only knew they were shipping it to Europe, maybe for post-World War II rations. The devastation still evident, even well after 1945. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. My dad talked a lot about that. Yeah. That's <laughs> factory. Yeah. He had more jobs than that. See, my dad them all grew up in Pikeville. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He grew up in Pikeville. It's not a bad thing. My where, father. You learn a lot. Where was the cheese factory? Um, in the same building as the uh, um, Holy Valley feed Holy Valley feed. And Harriet and... Yeah, Harriet and Interesting. And Harriet. I did not know that. Yeah. No. Mm. Do you know that there's a cheesemaker in Ole again? Yep. Because yeah. it all Southern comes full cycle, yeah. doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Cheesy wheeze. I trust their cheese a little better, though. <laughs> is that the Covered Bridge one? Yeah, yeah. Covered Bridge. Um, that is um, Belly Milk House. Um, mm-hmm. Her name's Stephanie Angstad. Um But anyway, I learned um, through Nancy, who was it a relative or a friend, um, worked there briefly when, yeah. he, when he was young but quit because some, I told yeah, you. He somebody, was in high school and he worked there. Uh, Paul Strunk. Yeah. yeah. And he said, <laughs> some boss guy peed into the vat and he said, that was enough yeah. for me. I quit the job. <laughs> No thanks. <laughs> and, and, and that he couldn't eat cheese for years because yeah. of that, right? Yeah. So I was like, wow, look at I'll that. <laughs> yeah, he's... Oh. Um, Quite a few number of years, Don E. W. Marshall. Okay. I'll oh. see him uh, actually on Monday. We're all going yeah. to the Rocky Horse Ranch. Yeah. Just, just write it down. you got a lot to remember now, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs>